Landboards presents Retrocomputing using FPGAs, Part 1. My first computer was an Ohio Scientific C1P, the Superboard 2, shown in the picture here. I bought this board in 1978 and spent about $280 on it, which when I was making $2.50 an hour was a lot of money. Well, I moved about 15 years ago and that computer ended up in a dumpster somewhere. It's a shame I tossed it out because one of them just sold on eBay for $295. Hey, even the paper manual gets a fair amount of money on eBay, which is neat. It actually had a schematic in it. All of this looking around left me feeling nostalgic for my old computer, which I rarely used anyway. Then I tripped across this page called the CompuKit UK101, creating a complete UK101 on a low-cost FPGA. The guy, Grant Searle, who did the CompuKit UK101 kit, had taken a low-cost eBay FPGA card and made my original computer with that. Grant's design supported a PS2 keyboard and a composite video monitor. Other than messing around with cabling, I designed a circuit card that had that function as well as other functions that he supports. After assembling the parts together and loading Grant's FPGA code, this is what I ended up with, a nice replica of my original computer. The computer boots to the enhanced Segmon and allows BASIC to be warm started, the original BASIC from the CompuKit, which is the same as the Superboard BASIC. It even supports the original keyboard layout, which was a little funky, so I put some P-Touch labels on it to uh, remind me of what the keys were. Grant's original design was for PAL European video, and I changed it to work with NTSC, as well as getting it to go to 48 columns in about 14 or 15 rows here. The original Superboard only had a couple of K of RAM, but Grant's design includes an expansion RAM, and I added that on my card as well, so I end up with about 41K of RAM free. Grant's basic FPGA hardware design supports other processor cores, as well as uh, operating environments. Here's the Z80 basic running. Thanks for watching and we'll try to put together a few more videos on retrocomputing using FPGAs.